So good morning everyone. Today I'm going to introduce this paper published in Bioactive Material 2023. The title is Mechanoresponsive Hydrogel for Direct Stem Cell Manufacturing to Therapy, which is done by Andy Tay and then other people. So their major concept is they culture MSC in 3D hydrogel. And then they evaluate the cell property based on cell proliferation, differentiation, and paracrine effect. And they are all combined together. And, and then they suggest their platform is quite good at for cell manufacturing. So this is their biomaterial based on gelma. And then gelma is, as you know, gelatin metaglase. Gelatin can give RGD, which is cell adhesive peptide sequence. And then they are metaglase for having chemical polymerization to enhance their physical property. The PEGDA for giving more biocompatibility they mix them together. And then magnetic particle, ion magnetic particle is added, which can be reacted by magnetic field. And then this magnetic particle is encapsulated in this hydrogel, not physically, but chemically using seal and click reaction. So all of them material is chemically preserved and then well set up platform. There is no just simple physical, physical mixing. So without static means that without magnetic moving, even though in the presence of magnetic particle, they didn't react with this magnetic field. So this hydrogel, they cannot move. And then cell inside, even though they are attaching in ECM, they cannot feel mechanical force, but under magnetic movement, you know, when this magnet is close to hydrogel, what happened? Magnetic particle, which is already attached in this matrix, they come to close, right? When they go back, and this is elastic material, this gelma, so they are going back their original position. Depending on their magnetic movement, when they close, close each other in the reaction with magnetic field, and then when they are apart, also this attraction force is released, and then they are apart. They come to be normal, okay? So you have to understand this one. So this is the reason why they make this plot. This turn to hydrogel, when they are close, magnetic intensity is increased, and then attraction force between magnetic, magnetic and then this nanoparticle enhance. So this gel is compressed. I will show you later the supplementary, why, they, why I mentioned compress. Because they are using dish. And then when they go back, this elastic material, they come to be their normal status. And then under this condition, they check morphology, proliferation, and stemness, as well as differentiation, and even secretion. They evaluate everything. Okay? So this is some kind of one big project. This is a good system or not. And then they want to understand this magnetic field induced force is important for regulating this or cellular behavior. Let's see supplementary first. This is their, this is how they did. They're using the mold. And then they making this hydrogel, and then this magnet, they can go below and go up. So when can you imagine when this magnet is closed to the mold, what happened? This magnet encapsulate hydrogel, they come to be compressed. Right? When they are, when they are go when they are go button, they come to be normal. So this is a one kind of compression study. They induce compression force in 3D structure for the stem cell. 
And then another. Okay. So here, let's say they, this microparticle and this cell, and then this magnet is on the bottom. Okay? So when they close, this magnet comes to close the magnet. Magnet particle come to close magnet, and then this magnet go back. This hydrogel, they are elastic, so they go to their normal status. So this is one way how, how you can induce so compression force to the cell in 3D encapsulated platform. If you have any question, just let me know. I will answer ASAP. So they also UV cross linkable, so they check the solution. When they UV cross linking, they are elastic hydrogel, so they are set. And then they use this plot many times. So I think this is one good way how you present your data when you have three different parameters. One is uh, gelatin, metacalate, and PEGDA percentage from 5 to 20%. The other one is what kind of magnetic, magnetic particle, how much they are loaded, 0 to 5%. The other one is they check the storage modulus. Storage modulus is just simply you can see the elastic modulus. So elastic modulus change from 100 Pascal to 6 kilopascal, depending on magnetic mag particle amount and then germa, pegda, inclusion. So you can see tendency, more magnetic particle, they are a little enhanced the uh, elastic modulus as well. This percentage increase, elastic modulus generally increase, right? So show their tendency, okay, this is, this is their platform. And this is their magnetic particle, around 3 to 4 micrometer, okay. So this is not nano, micrometer particle. Why they are making micrometer? When they make nanometer, cell can uptake the, uh, uptake the nanoparticle. So this is not from the extracellular to intracellular signal. So they want to make extra to intra. So they have to make micro size. When they're under like 500 nanometer, 0.5 micrometer, cell is to uptake. Uptake means nanoparticle can be go inside of their cell. It is too much complicated. So they want to tune the system only from outside of the cell. And then under this mm, magnetic field, so this is their quantification, their hydrogel is reactive to the magnetic field. So this momentum is increasing. Increasing means that a minus plus magnetic field, they can show in the presence of magnetic particle from this y-axis, larger, larger, larger. So this is meaning, according to the magnetic field, and that more magnetic particle, they can use more momentum, which is reactive to the magnetic field. Easy to understand. And then they check their SM images. Always, when you have hydrogel, you have to analyze by SEM. Why their pore side? Uh, is there any artifact? So when you check it, 10% they check. In supplementary, they use a lot, many com combination, but 10% and then from, from 1.5, 0.1% of particle to 5% particle. But you can see the tendency is um, actually it's hard to say something, but we can see some big pore relatively in higher magnetic on a particle inclusion. Right? And then but as you can see from this percentage, you can see this magnet magnetic particle itself. So they want to minimize in the just low, low magnetic particle. So they select this 1% as the best optimal condition for having relatively good pore size, like a 50 micrometer, which can encapsulate the cell properly. You know, the cell, when stem cell, when they are not spread inside, their size is around 10 to 20 micrometer. When they start to spread, like they can be 100, 200. But initially, 3D structure, 50 or 30, 30 mic, 50 to 30 micrometers is enough to encapsulate the cell. But when they are too below the number, 
cell cannot spread, cannot fill it properly. So they adjust 50 micrometer is relatively good. And then this in the presence of raw by, by magnetic particle, they select, they do not want to see it. So they select 1% for future study. This is their quantification, including poor. Mm. So this is a platform. And then, absolutely, where is the first one you have to do that? And you make on many, like any cell, any platform, first thing you have to do to do, to do is to check toxicity, right? So they check toxicity after encapsulating stem cell in 3D structure. And then it look, oh my god, many toxicity, but this is why axis is actually 90. So I, I, I don't like this kind of uh, presentation because if you highlight this is, a, they can induce some, some toxicity and then you can make it like that. But people, sometimes people cannot see detail in this y axis and then they feel like, oh, they show like 50% toxicity. They can be like that. But so, anyhow, they showed that from this uh, cut, relatively all of them is ov over 80%. It's, it's relatively fine, okay? Because when you encapsulate stem cell, they are not always 100% alive. 10% minimally, they are dead. So it's fine. So even though they are culturing for 14 days up to, their survivability is fine for long culture period because they have to culture them in longer period for differentiation. And then this is their analysis based on magnetic hydrogen distance from 20 millimeter, which is close to one, and then 80 millimeter, which is large, largest, di largest distance. From the largest distance, so this is, uh, you can see blue dot, blue dot, which is distance to magnet. Above is far away, below is close. So 20, 80, 20, 80, pull, push, pull, push. This is dish, pull, push, pull, push. And then they found force amplitude. Why, why they're measuring the, measuring the force? Force is compression force, okay? This is gel, the magnet is closed. This gel is compressed by magnetic particle and magnetic field, their attraction. Okay, when they go away, this hydrogen have to compress and they release. That is why they are checking the force as piconewton. Piconewton is very quite low, right? So 20 millimeter, this is enough to show like certain uh, piconewton force amplitude. But 40, little, 60, almost nothing, 80, nothing, okay? So this is their platform, they prove depending on the magnetic field, distance, they can control the force dynamically. And then this is their force, how they are homogeneously applied to the gel. This is the gel, pancake gel. And then on the bottom, they put the magnetic, magnetic. Distance is 20 or 66. It looks similar color, but when you look at the scale bar, this is uh, around 100, 10 to 6 power, sorry, 10 to 6 power, but this is point zero, point 0.3, same 10 to 6 power. So this is 100 times less intensity. But here they want to check homogeneously, force is induced. Why? In the edge, they are red color, because you know the gel, when you put the gel on the dish, the edge is always, they have interface between the plastic wear and the hydrogel. So somehow they can induce more like force here. So they prove homogeneously they can apply the force. And then meanwhile, they check the MSC, red MSC spreading. So one day through day, this is the longer how long you culture in the cell. 80 millimeter, 20 millimeter is how far away from gel, bottom, and then magnetic 
distance. 20 millimeter is closed, and then they are inducing more compression force dynamically. 80 millimeter, they are far away. Okay, they are very minimum magnetic field. So they check even control means uh, without or magnetic particle they have stem cell they have but no magnetic field okay no magnetic field you know this is our well-known cell a little bit start to spread but not like this kind of original spreading cell they just relatively spherical right the vincular express is very low which means they don't have much power to capture the ECM but only one day culture for this dynamic compression, what happened? Vincular is very highly expressed, and then their morphology is significantly different. Right? They are relatively spread. Three day, this tendency is going higher. But 80 millimeter far away, you know, this is not much of force. Uh, relatively similar to the control group. Okay, this is a proof of concept. They are externally oriented magnetic field can induce dynamic force leading to the change of the cell spreading or their vinculin expression. Vinculin is, as, you can, as I mentioned, cell ECM binding protein. More vinculin, more binding. And then, which means they feel something from external force. This is their high magnification. Control means they cannot see much integrating beta 1 dot. But this is our 3D, 3D and 20 millimeter. You can see many integrating cluster. What is the meaning of the integrating cluster? This is actually integrating. When you imagine there are maybe alpha, beta integrating, but they are not only one protein. When, they are, when this integral is very reactive to the external force or from certain condition, the integral is a cluster, like 10 integral come together, 100 integral come together, so you can give very strong signal as a dot. So this dot means not only single protein, it's like 100 integral beta one, okay? They all cluster in the same time, same spot. So more integral dot, integral cluster means they are more reactive. They are reacting something. So this integral cluster is very highly detected in three day and 20 millimeter than others. And then people will ask why they are checking integral beta one, not alpha five or alpha, alpha, alpha V or other integral. Integral alpha, they are, uh, they are, they are touching the up external force. So only alpha can touch ECM and beta one they are relatively linked to the actin. Actually, when they check alpha form, also they can see some difference. But they want to highlight the integral beta 1 and actin physical interaction. So this is the reason why they are checking beta 1. And as you know, alpha, they have many forms like alpha 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, V, and, and gamma, maybe 6 or 7. And the beta, only 1 and 2, 3, 3. And, and beta 1 is just very, very well known marker for MSC. So maybe alpha form can be changed in, in the context dependent manner. So this is the one reason why they are checking the beta one. Because beta one is true. Any, anytime they can change stem cell. But in case alpha, sometimes context dependently alpha, not only alpha, let's say alpha one expression, but their type, alpha one to alpha two, alpha one to alpha five, they can change. So they can, they want to rule out this kind of limitation. And this is their quantification. Here, uh, normal condition without sRNA integrating beta one. Just this is, this is their finding, spreading enhanced under simulation. But when they knock down integrating beta one to block the integrating to actin mechanical transduction, Right, and then when they have low, then when they have lower beta one, what happened? This spreading area is decreasing significantly, but not to their original position. 
sometimes, yeah, not only beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, they can react as a compensation or in the same system. So not 100%, but they are decreasing. So we can, they can say that beta 1 dependent, this mechanical transition occur. And they check general expression. This is not uh, RNA sequencing. This is their like hand, hand QPCR. So they check many standard MSC marker under MSC medium. And then they culture the cell for three days, hundreds in differentiation medium, independently. And then this is their oxygen medium. And then they are using four different cell lines, red one to red four, to give four and number four. And then 80, 80 millimeter is far away, no, not much lower stimulation. 20 millimeter, close, more stimulation, compression, right? Dynamic compression. And then one day, three day. Tendency is one day, three day, and 20 millimeter can show more gene expression related to Beta 1, low weight, Paxilin, Integrin Alpha 1, SRC, YAV, VGFA, MEPK, PTK2, Vinculin, Integrin Alpha 2, Alpha 5, MIKI 6, 7. Most of them you know it. Most of them integrin. Low weight is mechano sensitive one. Paxilin, Paxilin, Vinculin, they are all uh, focal adhesion protein. And then KI 6, 7, proliferation marker. YAV, as you know, YAV. VGFA, secreting from secreting gene, VGF. So all of them is enhanced in under mechanical transduction, mechanical reactive environment. But when they culture a chondrogenic medium under this stimulus, most of them is blue. Blue is lower than one, which means they are less chondrogenic. When you see the chondrocyte, chondrocyte, they don't need, why is that? They don't need uh, cell, ECM binding, moiety. Chondrocyte, they, when they culture the chondrocyte in hydrogel, this hydrogel, they don't need RGD. So, which means when, when the MSA is more reactive to ECM and when they need more integrin, this is a less chondrogenic environment. And then, oxygenic, opposite. More oxygenic, they need more power to capture, to sense. So, more oxygenic expression enhanced in stimulus microenvironment. So after briefly checking this tendency, but I feel like I don't, maybe that can be, that can, it can be done first, like this figure, or after doing the other experiment, and then they can go back here and to fill this, to fill this figure, I don't know. But either way, you know, this, now the tendency is when you show something, you have to see like, you have to show general tendency like from RNA sequencing, what is kind of huge amount of uh, QPCR, this, this is our like general tendency, and then you go deep in one by one. So let's see, figure one, what is that? Figure one is they prove the platform, platform they're making and they prove their concept. Platform we are making and optimizing. And then when we culture the cell, our proof of concept is well confirmed. Under stimulation, cell, MSA more spreading. This is which is especially integrally beta one dependent. Oh, okay, this is a, we can easily expect. And then to go to next deep step, generally they check the gene expression. Or you can replace this one in RNA sequencing data. And then they check one by one, chondrogenic, osteogenic, and paracrine effect. First, they checked, uh, they are culturing the stem cell under stemless media, gross media, so they check the proliferation index. Proliferation index, they are using one marker, or maybe KI67? Yeah, they are using one proliferation index marker, and then depending on how long you are stimulating the cell and the very distance of magnet, they check 
Preferential index is highly enhanced under stimulus condition. Okay? And then, this is magneto stimulus index. What, is, what does it mean? This means that distance to magnet multiply stimulus duration. So, when you have three days stimulation under magnet 20, and then the 20 is reversed, 20 is more force, right? And then this can be go like 5 index. And then similar duration, one day, 80 is very minimum stimulation, and this can be zero around. So they can, they are making their own index. So now, when you change, when you vary some certain parameter in biomaterial, and then, and then you just think about how you present this data, maybe this can be enough. But when you can make your own index, what is a very good way to, to show something? People will like it. It's more summarized, and more easy to understandable. So the meaning of this one is to show this high correlation in Pierce co coefficient effect, coefficient value. Magnetic stimulation index and preferential index, they are highly positively correlated, around 0.9. So normally, this correlation value is over 0.3, we can say weak correlation. Over 0.6, intermediate. Over 0.9, high correlation. So this is very high correlation. So this is very, they can strongly say that magneto stimulation is highly correlated to proliferation index. And then they prove their mechanism by yeah. 20 millimeters three day, they have more yap. So might be yap dependent. Okay. And then they stain the yap. Really, 20 millimeter yap is go inside nucleus. Okay. And then F. Okay. Some people say that proliferation stimulus, they are two different opposite phenomena. Or I don't know, opposite or in same in similar tendency phenomenon. So they want to check. Proliferation rate. 2D, 3D. All of this person, researcher, we already know that 3D culture, they are lower in the proliferation than 2D. Uh, this is very well known. But under stimulation, or 3D, but magnetic stimulation can induce more proliferation very similar to the 2D. This, this is why they mentioned this platform is quite good at for proliferating stem cell in 3D structure. Okay? The why 3D is good? 3D, they can always give more stemness. Uh, when, when in 3D, when preparation rate is losing, but stemness is more achievable, achieved. So 2D, 3D, more enhanced stemness, and then over activation, the stemness is really decreased. So they want to uh, make some optimal condition. Proliferation rate multiply stemness in intensity. So they multiply them, but they find out 3 day 40 millimeter. Why is that? This 40 millimeter relatively maintaining the stemness higher than 2D. And then proliferation rate also very similar to the 2D. So they found this is MSC quantity and quality. Quantity means proliferation. Quant uh, yeah, quality is the stemness marker. Maxim optimally achieved in this platform. Okay, this is very one of one of the good way to show their result. But actually, when you can see, 2D, 3D, they are 2.2, 2.3, but 2.6, like 10% increase. But this is like kind of how you decorate your result. This is only like 10% increase. But this is concept. When you culture the stem cell in 3D, already people report a lot. Proliferation decrease, stemness increase. So how you optimize them? Might be our platform can enhance both of them. But actually, they don't. They are decreasing or a little increasing. So they combine them together to show the, this tendency. And then this is back study. MSC marker CD90. Actually, when you culture MSC on longer period, CD90 passive cell is their marker of stemness. But this marker, they are cluster like two. High stemness this part, low stemness, this part. But this low stemness part from 2D culture is 10%. And then, when they 
this 10%, how they are decreased on 3D? 5%, which means more high stemless cell fraction you can achieve from this 3D culture platform. Okay? But when they are under stimulus, 3 day, 1 day, 3 day, and that this cluster L is more intense, which is one way to show stemless intensity is decreasing. And then why they are decreasing? You can easily say they are aging or they are differentiated. Right? Actually, they didn't check aging yet, but they said they, are, they come to differentiate to another lineage. So that's why they are losing this, uh, their lower stem cell marker fraction is enhanced, which is one of the sign of differentiation. And then from figure three, uh, figure four, previous figure, they are culturing the stem cell in gross media, stem cell gross media. From now, they are culturing stem cell under mechanical stimulus in autogenic, autogenic media. Okay? They change the media. ALP is one of the best marker for saying osteogenesis. Osteogenesis enhanced more magnetic force and then longer culture. And then this is very also high correlated. And then they check FAK belongs to ocean. FAK is FAK is focal adhesion kinase. FAK is reactive when MSC come to differentiate or from the external force, the stem cell is, re is reacted, FAK is enhanced. FAK is very basic signaling pathway to govern most of the differentiation, even in stemless. stemless. But here, they highlight just FAK is one of the best, one of the well-known pathway for inducing <coughs> osteogenesis. And then this is also linking to the ECM to cell interaction in mechanical transition way. So they choose. This is not coming out from some sequencing data or other thing. They just select shotgun. Okay, FAK can work. They say FAK, really first FAK is enhanced in 3D 20 millimeter. And while belongs to ocean, ocean protein level is also enhanced. When they add FAK inhibitor in the 3D 20 millimeter, they're going down. So this is the one way to prove this FAK dependent osteogenesis by magneto stimulation. The figure, figure D, they culture the cell chondrogenic medium, okay? But opposite direction, low magnetic stimulation, less culture duration, in S, S gap. S gap is, you know, chondrogenic ECM, negative correlation. And then here, they didn't check detail about this pathway, but they prove their prove their concept in protein level, auricot and collagen 2, which is a very well-known marker for both chondrogen medium. This is more relatively higher in one, uh, higher in three days. Uh, I don't know this is higher or not, but compared to one day 20 millimeter and three day 20 millimeter, this auricot is a little bit higher than this. This is, I think, almost similar. So chondrogenic, okay. They, anyway, they are not enhanced. And then, after getting this data, so also, I also did this similar thing with other, our Songil. So this is exact uh, good bilayer interface. When you see the knee joint, how knee joint is consist of. When you look at this side, most upper part is chondrocyte major part, chondrogenic site cartilage. When you go below this surgically, and you can see the bone. So when you have damaged this joint, you have to repair chondrogen layer as well as bone layer. So which means that actually it's not it's not easy to it's easy to regenerate bone layer. Bone is always growing fast. But chondrogen layer is not easy. Because this this chondrogen layer, when they are filled with the bone, like overgrowth bone from this bottom part, and then your leg, you cannot move. 
in a good way. You feel some pain. Sometimes so your leg is broken. This part can be easily broken. The cartilage is kind of cushion to relieve the stress from your weight. So that is why the preservation of the cartilage is very important. So for that, people from a long time ago, they suggest this kind of bilayer system. One is cartilage region, the other one is bone region. Okay? After getting this concept, at getting this data, actually, if this chondrogenic also enhanced in this mechano stimulus, they didn't provide this concept. But somehow, they get it. So, oceanic enhanced, while chondrogenic reduced. So, this is a perfect model to apply in this system. So, even though here, bottom layer, to induce magnetic stimulus, they are adding magnetic particles. Upper layer, same hydrogel without magnetic particle because they have to apply the magnetic field at the same time. Okay? You cannot apply the magnetic field only bottom side because magnetic field always they can touch, they can, they can induce. Right? So the most easiest way is to remove the magnetic particle, upper layer. And then in the presence of magnetic field, this layer, they didn't compress. So they, do, they have no mechanical stimulation. So, why the black color? Because of magnetic particle. Why transparent? No magnetic particle. And then they apply the magnetic from downside. Okay? And then from SEM, they show these images. And then can you imagine how you can make this color after checking, after seeing the SEM, they just artificially draw on them. So, you, just, you have to learn have to learn how they show the show the figure in a beautiful way. Okay? Layer, magnetic particles you just mark by image J or other way. It's black dot. And then they culture oxygenic medium for I don't know, I don't see detail about the oxygenic medium, collagenic medium, half and half, or only oxygen medium. And yet they're culturing one medium, different is medium, and apply the magnetic field. And then, as you can imagine, collagen 1 is oxygenic ECM, while collagen 2 is chondrogenic ECM. When you see the same morphology from top, round shape, bottom, spreading, and we can easily simply imagine, oh, and then my concept can work. Upper weight on its magnetic stimulation, which is our proof of concept. Bottom layer, when they have magnetic particle, they show more collagen 1, oxygenesis, while they are decreasing. And opposite, collagen 2 is more enhanced on the top. But without magnetic stimulation, the tendency, they are gone. Okay? So they confirm, oh, this kind of bilayer system can be achievable using our platform. Okay? And the last, what is the major function of the MSC for clinical application? Maybe when you inject stem cell in human body, what is the major law? 90, 99% cell is going out, wash out your body within one day. Maybe just 5 or 10% they can remain in the tissue and then they differentiate to a certain lineage. So most of cells, they're gone. And then how they get the good result from the stem cell therapy? Actually, people mention a lot, not from the residual stem cell, which could be differentiated into certain lineage, but from the parkland effect, only for that short period, like 12 hours or one day. That time is enough to change your whole body system or your their microenvironment. So that is why people look at a lot of the parkland effect how much of paracrine or secretum is released. So, as a one marker, they check VGF secretion in supplementary, base FGF or IGF. Maybe they are all similarly enhanced in certain, in certain position. So, increase of stimulus can induce more VGF, more paracrine effect, more releasing. And then, very well known, ARC dependent pathway is very important to regulate the stem cell paracrine effect. So, so they checked ARC, phosphoric level, 3 20 millimeter very high, VGF, secreted VGF protein is high, 
And then when they use MLK inhibitor to reduce the phosphor L org, they are all gone. And then stem cell, when they are physically reacted by magnetic field, magnetic stimulus, they start to show, start to release their secretum. The mechanism is well known, bulk pathway. And then after getting the supernatant, this is all under gross medium. And then get the supernatant and treat the Hubex cell and endocellular cell line. And this sprouting is a marker of angiogenesis. Okay? Angiogenesis is enhanced here. Positive is Hubex cell medium with full supplementary. More angiogenesis sprouting. This is, this is also similar sprouting. And then this tubular formation. Tubular formation means that when they are more intermingled, which means tubular is more formed. Compared to 3D 80 millimeter, they are sometimes they are cut like that. But here, uh, 3D 20 millimeter, very also control also some some part they are cut, but they are very well formed, similar to passive control. Okay, and then this Parker effect is proved, enhanced. And then this effect is confirmed by the uh, endocellular cell line on matrija. So this is the end of this paper. And then when you look at the supplementary, uh, the first 10 figures about how they make the gel, how they gelatin, original gelatin, and then their metacalation rate, how they change from 0 to 0.75, okay? From NMR, A, B, C, where's D? D. This A, B, C, D is here, A, B, C, D, okay? And then, degree of substitution, and then A, NH2, RGD amount on gelatin, how they disappear, and then how polymerization, they are enhanced for animal. And then hydrogen, always they need degradation and swelling. It's very basic. If you make hydrogen, you have to always put those data in your supplementary. Without that, people will argue about you. And then real world data. And then this gray is UV reactive. If, when you apply UV, they are going up, the elastic modulus. FTIR, checking magnetic particle presence here. <coughs> and the metacalation peak. Metacalation peak is almost similar, so you cannot see detail. The magnetic peak, here you can see it. And then they are worried about the toxicity from the magnetic leakage. Actually, iron oxide, magnetic particle is iron oxide, right? Iron oxide is toxic. Actually, when they have certain, when they are over certain threshold, they are toxic. So they check magnetic particle leakage Fe ion something. And then there is not much of Fe ion release. Passive control is Fe ion control group. And then they check CCK, similar cell viability. And this Jerma increase your percentage, what you happen? Pore is decreasing. Okay, so as I told you, when pore is more, pore is more decreasing certain below level, cell cannot spread. Cell just feel they are in the poison. Uh, they are in the very confined. It, they are not feel good. They are not feeling good. So we need some proper pore diameter. So they are checking. They are same, 10% is optimal for having around 30 to 550 micrometer pore. And then this MSC, they primary culture MSC, red, from the red, so positive MSC marker effects. They are checking original, their stem cells, stemness, and differentiation. It is also very good. Magnetic particle and cell, how they are homogeneously mixed, right? When you mix some particle in gel, People will ask, they are homogeneously mixed or not? Very simple review question. I don't know, they put after reviewing or before reviewing. 
and then CCK. Some people ask, oh, CCK looks similar. And then how you can see the cell proliferation difference? The beauty is that CCK is always they are checking mitochondrial activity. Okay? But when they check the proliferation, they checking <laughs> DNA doubling. That can be different. Okay. Oh, you have to always remember proliferation that can be evaluated by CCK sometimes. Because people will assume that cell number is correlated to the cell proliferation. And then based on cell have same DNA replication. But sometimes mitochondrial activity can be different from certain conditions. So that's why when you really see the cell proliferation, you have to stain, you have to quantify the DNA replication amount by DS DNA assay or other way. This case, one simple way to say proliferation, but it's not good gold standard. And then this proof, after 100 compression cycle, they go back to normal stage, which means this is elastic. Genoma is always elastic material. And then why is it not elastic material? Collagen arginine. This one is non-elastic gel, viscoelastic gel, right? So our skin, viscoelastic, but most of the chemically preserved, chemically linked gel, like gelatin metacalation, and what else? Meha. Hmm. When they are all metacalate, which means all elastic, but when they are a physical cross-linking like arginate, collagen, pH dependent increase. Actually, physical cross-linking gels they don't have much, right? Most of them, when you see the paper, they are all chemical cross-linking and the all is elastic. So you have to always remember elastic one, viscoelastic one. Most of them elastic, but viscoelastic they always have to mention this viscoelastic, which means they are, they have sex relaxation property. And then, depending on magnet distance from 30, 40, 50, 60, it looks the same color, but when you look at the scale bar, 60, 20, 6, 1, okay? And, the, and this is, this is hydrogel. You change the distance, magnet. And when you look at the, this edge, they are compressed, right? And then, more blue color is more or less so this is more close distance. More close magnet is position. This, ah, sorry. Oh, ah, this is their HMX. Oh. Ah, they convert their distance to magnetic field amount. More magnetic field, they are more compressed phenomenon, okay? So when you imagine cell, when they're inside, how they're compressed? Compressed? And then third time release, compared release. Like one time, one second. And the cell circularity, vinculin, effect intensity quantification, beta one intensity quantification, and approved sRNA effect, the Western blood. Knockdown sRNA, integral beta one is knocked down. And then correlation graph after many QPCR results. And then sRNA under. There's no increase of this beta on YAB and MIK67. And then this is good. Hmm. MSC, uh, they are originally spindle-like. Like this, this uh, when you see the MSC, when they're spindle, this, they have good stemness. But when, they are, when you are passaging, okay, and then cell come to be flat, which means they are aged, they are stemless, their stemness is losing now. Okay? So this is the one way how you see the stemness of MSC. So when you culture the stemness, oh, maybe they're spreading a lot. And oh my god, and this is their old passage. They're already gone. And you have to find another new, pa new patch. So here, when they're passaging, passage one, two, blah, 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 you can see lower cluster is severely enhancing. Okay? And in iTrain, maybe professor, he found that this old stem cell, 
when they are convert to the spheroid and they receive it again on the dish, then this low cluster is diminished to original one. So this is the common we can say that rejuvenation, rejuvenation, or anti-aging. So we already know that we can change the stemless morphology by the gel or by another engineering platform. But the one important thing is that morphology can say many things to you. So please look at your cell detail, and then you can catch many ideas from them. So passage 5, 2D, 3D, a uh, little enhance the higher cluster in 3D culture. And then over time 3D culture, more activation, little bit losing this higher portion and increasing lower portion, which is the marker of differentiation. One way. And nuclear theory, actually here, they didn't look at the nucleus that much. Maybe for next project, they check nucleus laminacy change or histone three kinase mutation three oscillation or periphery amarine. Actually, if I were them, I did the experiment. I believe one or two years later, they will publish the same platform and then about the nucleus change. So in iTrain, why we are focusing on many nucleus? We want to, we want to o overcome this step. If you do this one, like this uh, phenomenon, differentiation or some <coughs> pathway, then that can be published in this journal. It's biochemical is very good, but our aim is higher than that. For that, we always have to look at the nucleus. Because now we are doing nucleus, and then this week or next week only we can submit. And then they will accept our concept. But two or three years later, when they do when we do our, when we are doing nucleus, they do not accept any anymore. Because they are all trend is gone. They are fast moving. Okay. This is why we are continuously asking, okay, why, what kind of nucleus change, morphologically, laminate level, other things? And is there any other things? Main region. And then octopus acts to stem is marker, highly nest in 3D. And then on the stimulus, they are relatively losing, right? And then all like FAK pathway and then ALP. Mm. Another differentiation marker, TMD and the VGF secretion. Secretion marker. Yeah. Endocellular cell proliferation. Little enhanced. Also, this endocellular cell quantification. And then they also check endocellular cell migration from the su superintendent from MSC. Okay, so this end of this paper. So, do you have any question? So, they never specifically mentioned the use of PMD for their experiments? No, no, supplementary, you can see. Don't, don't you see? Supplementary? I check. Zero. Huh? Tail. <laughs> oh, what's your differentiation? I put your name. What's your differentiation? Could be. Oh. I think they use homogenic media, but mm. they, I don't think they specify it in the paper. Yes, might be. Mm. Yeah, it might be this congenic medium for checking the stemness, three different lineage, or they are really culturing this differentiation medium for checking MSC lineage in our platform. <coughs> Actually, they didn't really very specifically mention. Mm 
you clear and acting their yeah, like linking. So you are thinking you are thinking about your macrophage project or just general MSD? Ah, uh, so maybe if I use this, I think if I have this platform, definitely we have to look at the nucleus, right? And then first we are showing like like this paper, integrated beta one is important to receive the signal from the outside. And Vinkly is enhanced. Vinkly integrated beta one is enhanced. And then actin, actually they didn't see much of actin. So, but, but actin they're spreading, they just mentioned like that. But actin or tubulin or intermediate filament, which kind of cytoskeletal components is important for, for relaying this external force to the nucleus. And then, so this, so integrin beta one, vinculin, cytoskeletal component actin intermediate filament, macrotubule, and nucleus, right? The between nucleus and cytoskeletal component, what else? Nesprin 1 and 2, amarine, that can be involved. And then we have to show which kind of thing is more enhanced in this platform. And then finally, what kind of epigenetic change? Is translation enhanced? Or apologically, k 9 3 is decreasing? Or other, other epigenetic is changed? And when you look at that one, and then we block one by one. SRNA and SRA integrin beta one block, FAK pessary block, actin block, in, in tubal block, something block. Or finally, this uh, epigenetic modifier, HAT or HDA or histone methylase, this kind of enzyme, rider and removal blocking. And then show the, how the relay is going on to the nucleus. Actually, final outcome is the same. Maybe differentiation enhanced. But they didn't look at this delaying pathway, right? They only just show, like, little, like, super, not superficially, little, little, like, taste. Integrity better one is involved. And YAB is enhanced. That's all. It's very, very well known. But people want to know how this uh, magneto stimulus can delay on to the nucleus. And then from this laying on, what kind of component is important? Hmm. I mean, that's the way how I can guide you. Hmm. And then lastly, maybe ATK sequencing or chip sequencing. Maybe when you find that H2 kinematin 3 is significantly decreasing, and then we have to do H3 kinematin 3 hit chip sequencing. And then finish. And then we can aim to more good job. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, see you next time.